Yo, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to your candy mono. What's it even called? I'm not Neko Monogatari Kuro, episode four. Neko, I think I got it right that time. Whoa, evolving, evolving character development. Yeah, Neko Monogatari Kuro, episode four. So, what happened on episode three? We had Hanakawa, horrible, tragic backstory fleshed out even more in that she doesn't even have her own room. Shout out to the water that you might have been able to just hear just now. Um, so that sucks. We have. Araragi, of course, responded to that by immediately running to Tsukiki for comfort. Totally understandable. Uh, Oshino's been trying to fight Hanakawa, uh, you know, metal cat Hanakawa, right? And has been failing because Hanakawa isn't just a normal metal cat, like, which is really easy to deal with, but it's instead this special mixture of metal cat and Hanakawa, which keeps all of Hanakawa's crazy intelligence and knowledge, which allows this combo fusion to just outplay uh, Oshino. Why does that happen? Well, it's because Hanakawa, um, when she saved the cat, she didn't actually do it because she cared for the cat. She was just doing it as an automatic reflex of, oh, a normal girl would save the cat, and I'm trying to be a normal girl, or at least, like, keep the facade up. Like, that's what she's, you know, that's, like, her fake self that she's trying to portray, so I'm going to save the cat. So it was, like, fully, like, an intellectual, like, reaction as opposed to being a heart thing that she, her heart was into which is what the metal cat usually deals with. So, you know, blah, blah, blah. Stuff went crazy, um, which is interesting. It's an interesting spin and kind of a little worrying because it's like, if, I don't know, like the whole like Hanakawa automatically doing things, especially moral things, is like, okay, if we take that away, what's she going to do? Like, is she still going to do morally good things if she doesn't have that fake self that she's trying to like, you know, put up. Like, you know, if, if she's constantly working for her fake self, then what's her real self? Like how developed is her, her, her real self kind of thing. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe we'll get a little glimpse into that. Um, and we've kind of been getting glimpses of that as well, which is kind of the show in general, right? Like with uh, Kizu and uh, just Bake, right? The end of Bake with Tsubasa Cat. So yeah, I don't know. Um, wolf in sheep's clothing. This was a fun fact. I did read this. I appreciate that. Um, Hanakawa, horrible backstory. <laughs> the Dursleys at least gave Harry Potter the space under the stairs. Yeah, not even that. And the, the, and the house was empty too. It's like, why, why, why not? Why not? Why, what, what do you get out of this? Like, it's literally just so much neglect and I hate that. But I get, that's the point that we're supposed to hate that. But I don't know, man. Throws me off. Um, blah, 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 blah. I thought this was really funny. <laughs> Use Araragi as bait, and Oshino, who's just chilling in the bushes, chucks an entire shinobu at her. It's literally just a... I think I said this, like, verbatim somewhere in here. I just like the line, though. Just entire shinobu. I just love that. Um, weakest arc. Yeah. Weakest is hard to say, because, of course, I haven't seen all of them. And it's like, how does this fit into the grand scheme? But it definitely... Like, I'm less interested in this arc than I have been in other arcs, for sure, for sure. Which, I think, it's because it's a flashback. We know how it ends, so, like, the stakes are a lot lower. Um, appreciate this as well. Give it a little heart. D. Okay, but yeah, this uh, I wanted to go through really quick. Kind of speed running this, because I want to watch the actual episode, but that's okay. Um, Accuracy of Araragi's panty depictions varies depending on the situation. It's about what Araragi sees, not whether his views are accurate. That... This is something we've, the entire time, like, this is the show. That's just how it works, right? It's all through Araragi's, Araragi's perspective, and that's kind of the point. I, and I'm curious how I feel about that formula, because, like, Araragi isn't my main draw into the show. That's like, I'm not watching the show for Araragi. He's fine. He's a fine protagonist. Um, but he's not, like, absolutely pogged out of his gourd. He's not, like, making crazy moves to me very often. And that's okay, Right? Like, he's not suboptimal. I would say he's just, he's not like SS triple plus tier or anything, right? So for the entire show to like really reflect back onto Araragi, I don't know, it feels a little weird because like Araragi is not really like what I'm completely here for, you know? Like, I really appreciate the individual oddity arcs and kind of the stories that are like told in there in kind of like a, in kind of like a vacuum um, without even trying to apply it to Araragi, you know? Like the whole... Let's manifest the poor relations between people into invisible snakes. And like, how does that play out? And then it goes to bite back the original person, like the thematic element within the kind of thing. But when you start to try to flip it onto Araragi, like I enjoy that and that's interesting, but that's not my main draw into the show, you know? So 
Yeah, I mean, I think this is accurate. I think this is true. It's just kind of a weird, a weird spot where like, I, I don't know. I was about to say like, I wish it was less through Araragi's lens and more objective because Araragi's lens like aren't the biggest draw for me. But I don't know like if the show would be as interesting and like unique if it wasn't all skewed as much as it is. So I don't know. Just random thought word word jargon mumble, I guess. <clears throat> also, I'm drinking apple juice, by the way. Let me just take a sip of my apple juice. I do have a Dr. Pepper cream soda right here, but I was just I was at the store. I'm not gonna tell the store story. What am I talking about? Let me talk about Monogatari. Okay. <laughs> Literally, like you were about to just like double tap, skip past the thing, skip like deeper into the episode. No, no, no. We're talking about the show. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Um Kiss shot wasn't overconfident. She tried to let herself be killed. That's the whole point. That's true. Um, I think I said she was overconfident. And that's what got her hoed, despite her being the most powerful vampire. No, 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 no. Yeah, she wanted to die. She was, because, yeah, that's true. I just was speaking bad, I guess. Unlucky. Um, true, 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 true. The important thing here was the comparison between the vampire and the metal cat. Um, this interpretation here is that the vampire feeds and sustains off of um, the energy, where for the metal cat, it's just kind of an automatic thing that happens, whether you want it to or not, right? Um, so what does that, like, what do the abilities actually stand for? This is kind of saying, like, uh, draining, or for Araragi, right, and vampirism, Draining them by helping them takes away the opportunity to help themselves. He gets off on it. That's what he likes to do, so he doesn't have to deal with himself. That, yeah, I mean, that's pretty accurate. He's always, especially in Bakke, right? He's always helping other people and not focusing on his own stuff, which was Kizu, until later. Now we're actually going back and dealing with the stuff that he didn't want to deal with, which is what we're doing right now. That's why we're flashbacking, right? Because we're going back to what he's been avoiding. So... Yeah, and so for it to compare over to Hanakawa, it's just kind of clean writing, right? Because it's um, a fake ripoff version of Vampire Powers, which is what she was talking about in Kyuzu, at the beginning of Kyuzu. That's what she wanted to see. So, I don't know. I just I thought this was a good kind of like, it was like a binding agent to kind of sew it all together. Or something. What am I even talking about? I don't freaking know. I kind of want to just watch the show, man. Let's just watch the show, man. Or is there anything I'm trying to scroll through in 3... Um, it's hopeless. Everything's horrible. Suki, he's chilling. Um, he sleeps with both his sisters, not in like a creepy way, but just in a chilling. Hanakawa, Oshino got jumped a couple times. Hanak Black Hanakawa could have killed Oshino, but didn't want to. Um, <laughs> it says Miyahahaha vampire on the, on the board there. That's funny. Uh, yeah. So I guess the interesting thing and what I'm looking out for specifically, oh, this was important as well. Um, I'll get to that in a second. Is that like, how is Shinobu going to, because we know Shinobu drains Hanakawa to like cure her, right? But with all the bad energy between Shinobu and Aragi, I'll be really intrigued on if there's any like specific dialogue or anything that happens right like do they pre how much do they pre-plan this i think they pre-planned shinobu to do this so is oshino just gonna like walk up to these two and be like hey i need Sh shinobu's gotta drain her energy that's our that's the play and are they just gonna like begrudgingly accept despite their kind of like weird energy or is there gonna be like something else going on i don't know i'm intrigued on that though um this bit i want to just kind of rewatch really quick Aragi talking about loving Hanakawa. I love her so much that it's unbearable. But what I feel for her isn't love. It's like this obsession, ideal idealization or something, right? I want to die for He wants to like be a martyr for her or something, right? I want to die for her sake. I don't want to be with her forever. I want to die for her sake. It's like he values her so highly and cares about her so much that he, like, it, like, skews how much he cares about himself as opposed to Senju Gohara, which he values, like, himself. You know, it's, like, more balanced or whatever. Hmm. Well, this is also a flashback, right? So I'm curious if this has changed at all from him, like, 
you know, if this change in the present. Uh, I don't know. It's tough questions. I kind of want to just jump into the episode, honestly. Work with some work with some actual new content for a minute here. New content in the flashback, which is like old content, but then also given a new new stuff in it. I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, episode four, Nico Monogatari Kuro, finale of Kuro. Let's go on and three, two, one, bang. Is he asking for Shinobu's help? He is asking for Shinobu's help for a week straight. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I was just asking, you know, how are they gonna, how is Shinobu gonna um, help? Like, how is that gonna happen? He just asked for her help for a couple days and then she went stomp. Appreciate you for that, I guess, Shinobu. I, you can't blame her that much, you know? They're in that weird spot. Is the guitar gonna show up? At this point, it's just a dead end, right? It's surely. Surely it's a dead end. Um, Hanakawa, I feel like, man, with how much of Hanakawa is like a fake persona on top of whatever the real Hanakawa is, it's like, man, I wish I knew who the real Hanakawa was. You know, without her trying to be a normal girl for her family and all that. Like, is the real Hanakawa just, like, a nomad with a guitar just chilling? Or nah, right? Maybe that's kind of the point, right? That she wants to be, like, a wandering musician type. Because we know she wants to be, like, a wanderer. That's why she's, um, that was her plan at the end of school, right? To, uh, to go wander or like go to a bunch of different, like, like a vacation kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. What's up, Shinobu? Ow. Oh, this music though. Oh, she's barfing the sword out. Wow, wait, this is crazy. Heart span. Oh, it doesn't have its handle. It's just the blade. Right? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't have a handle. She really said, deal with it yourself. Here's my sword. <laughs> giant sword, this guy. Well, we know, though, that Shinobu is gonna <laughs> into him, so I'm confused why the sword's here. Oh, you heard about that. Hmm. Oh, she's bleeding. their side like oddity's side no yeah he's in the middle that's why i love him there is no right or wrong i like it i like it oshino dude oshino's always spit the spits the best words I feel like every time he speaks, it's like I can agree with him, you know? Eh. 
Angel Hanakawa. And it's like an autumn, it's like a weird righteousness too. It's like a non-genuine righteousness. Okay, let's, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Okay, explain. Going into a cave. He's got a sword, Oshino. Know. He's, this sword is scary. Okay. <laughs> Okay, yeah, tell me about Heartspin, why not? Okay, nice, nice. As your best friend, thank you. Oh, good point. Yeah, she'll be ready for it. Then she's already she's already come up with it and beat it. Yeah, that might be that might be a fair point. I hope. Oh, Oshino. Photographer goes hard. Okay. <laughs> Fair. I mean, she's gonna see you with the giant sword, though. Your way. What's your way, Adaragi? This sword. Okay. Oh, he sent a message? Okay. Yeah, I could see that working. 21 minutes? 30 minutes on the dot. I mean, Shinobu's in the building, though, so we're... I could see how this all, uh, I don't know. This is kind of scary. What'd you send her? Oh, she's wearing different clothes. A vampire's after my life. Help me. Wow.
Wow, it, it sounds more like normal Hanakawa, too. That's kind of scary. Especially when she first busted in. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I- Dude, me and Adragi on the same wavelength. Yeah, there's no meows. Good point. So the real Hanakawa came out for a second there. Or like, where like she dropped the pretend, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. But is that like, is that what she just automatically does? Cause she's trying to be a normal girl. Or is that like who she truly is? I guess it's, I feel like he's saying it's who she truly is, but she might disagree. Too kind and too strong. Aradagi, random question, where's your sword? Okay. Musical households. <laughs> Even if bad things happen, just be happy. And it cuts to Shinobu. That's interesting. Oh, <laughs> Shino's there. He'll drain it. Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. I'm getting a headache too.
Yeah, because you drain it. And I couldn't even become that. Oh, right, because, yeah, you turned back to your humanity. Oh, my goodness. Shinobu, 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 Shinobu. Help, 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 help. I'm getting scared. Whoa, whoa. She's flipping between her forms. I? No, Honokawa. Oh, she's gonna kill. Oh, that hair, though. Marvelous. He wants to- he's, em he's embracing the martyrdom that he was talking about last episode. Uh... <laughs> okay. He was cut horizontally in half. Unlucky. Wait, she's also saying out? Are you okay? What's happening? What? Oh, do you have the sword like hidden? in himself so that she cut herself. Okay, good move. Good move, okay. Okay, nice. Wait, why do we need Shinobu to help then? He just played her. Good move. Where was the sword, I was asking? Yeah, it was inside of him. What a god. You've been played. You've been played. Oh, she didn't know about it. Good point. Yeah. She only knows what she knows. It was risky, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, his legs are like a sheath for the sword. What a guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. The line. Yeah, you love the self-sacrifice. Oh, that you're just carrying the symptom? Yeah. He just wanted to... Yeah. He just wanted his own satisfaction. Little leech, little vampire. Oh, wow, look at that. She's going full furry mode.
What do you mean, adverse? This show is so weird. <laughs> It's just on a whim. Or, okay. Mm. The projection. Shinobu? Oh, what's up, Shinobu? There you are. If you rip its plug out. No, it was a great manner. I loved it. Oh! Is she gonna feed him her arm? Oh, the blood, yeah, to heal him. Thank you. Oh, good. Wait, and his pants grew back? Well, okay, that's OP. Okay. Watch closely, closely. A sword swallow, man. She didn't use it, she just used her bite. Maybe she like absorbed it, it, it like empowered her bite or something, but yeah, let's talk. Please talk. What, they're just gonna, oh, come on, man. More, I need more. Oh, the guitar. The guitar, please, Onagawa. Oh, the wind turbines aren't going. Dang, that looks yummy. Oh, the cat. It's actually there now. Oh, that, the hat, yeah. Yeah. I miss the hat, I liked the hat. You don't get rewarded. That's what you were saying. You don't get rewarded. Oh, man. Doesn't remember a thing. I mean, are they, though? What if you're wrong? What if she's just pretending to not know? Because she's good at pretending. You know? A new modern oddity, Black Hanakawa. Okay, it's the official name. I agree, completely. Black, 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 black. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And then she worked together with the cat. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. An oppor 
Tunit idealist. I couldn't even die, not even for her on a color stick. Oh man. Interesting. <laughs> if even Oshino's saying it, then like, oh, okay. I think it's a fair trade. Yeah, marriage should be a trade. It should be transactional. Good call. <laughs> she has those. Hmm. <laughs> People will save themselves on their own. Uh, okay. That's kind of the problem. Oh, yeah, yeah. Man, Araki looked great in that last shot. Him looking out the window. I will, oh, okay, yeah. It's one of those things that you can't say. Like, like Oshino just said. Oh, wow, yeah. Okay. Because he was a lone wolf. He had none of that. So it was such a mess when he did it for the first time, when he, like, opened up for the first time and, like, empathized. Wow, yeah. Fell out of love for the first time, even though he wasn't in love. In Senjigahara. Fell out of love for the first time without having been in love. Oh, wow, look at this. They're doing a little special ED. Just the cat being chilling. Man, this episode was dense. This was like reading a book, which is fine, which is fine. I'm like used to it, right? But like... I'm definitely gonna have to chew through some of that. You know, they, they, there was enough crazy stuff going on that I understand why they give it its own like arc, right? There are another like flashback look. Oh, look at that in the bottom, right. Oh, I love that. The cat like morphing into her laying down. They're like kind of in that fetal position. It's like mirroring each other. Yeah, that's crazy. 
Because it's like, you have Araragi who's never interacted, like, who's lur- like... How do I put it? Like, his first act of, like, empathy, or, like, one of his big- Eh, I don't want to say first. He had a really big thing of empathy, right, when he met Hanakawa. Because that was at the start of Kizu, and before that he was talking about all his lone wolf stuff, and, like, interact human interactions make you weaker, all that kind of crap, right? So he interacts with Hanakawa, and that becomes formed. And so we have him, who's like, figuring out of that out. And it's such a powerful feeling for him that it's like, destructive. I'm just gonna pause, I'll get to this in a second. Right, where it's like, that empathy has driven him to the point of self-destruction, which then is shown with Kiss Shot, right? Because as soon as he walks up with Kiss Shot, his ability to empathize has been like, unlocked by Hanakawa, or maybe is currently being unlocked, with Hanakawa and Kiss Shot, so he immediately like martyrs himself for her. And he wants to do the same for Hanakawa. Cause it's like he he's like unable to regulate it like appropriately or whatever, right? I guess. And so yeah, like that I really like that interaction. And then but then like how does like Hanakawa is a person who I mean has been neglected so, I mean, her ability to empathize is probably all messed up. Like, her true self is kind of, like, covered up by all sorts of nonsense. Which is, you know, I mean, whenever she becomes black on a collar, like, a lot of her clothes strip off. You know, all those things covering her up strip off. Um, which is kind of also crazy. Like, we go back to Kizu, too, right? Where she, like, starts to undress. And they're, like, she's, like, showing himself to him and, like, getting rid of some of that stuff. But then he is unable to, like, you know, he, like, loses his cool, and, like, they aren't able to make that connection because they're both so... <sighs> ah, I can't find the right words. I can't find the right words. It's crazy. This show is just crazy. Okay, I want to... What? Uh, let me hit this. Let me hit this preview. Let me scroll through a bit, bit, and then hopefully I'll be able to put together what I'm trying to say. My preview hallucination. Araragi cut in half. That's funny. Black Araragi. Shinobu, what are you talking about? Second base. Touching Hanakawa. Tsubasa Tiger. What the heck, Tsubasa Tiger? What do you mean, Tsubasa Tiger? No. No, 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 no. We're not doing more. We're not doing more. No, Tsubasa Tiger. Can we? She suffered enough. She suffered enough. Stop giving her oddities, man. My master deserves certain death and not a vague death watch. What? Okay, wait. Can you just? What death beetle are you smoking about? The death watch beetle. This character's is written in, with me in those exact things too. Direct translation from English. Death watch beetle. I don't know what that means. It's cry removes the TikTok of clocks. What? Countdown to death. Oh man, that's just okay. So we're gonna be dealing with some like crazy death, martyrdom, self-destructive tendencies stuff. Okay, bet. I'm I'm down. Um, yeah. So this entire conversation here, pretty much all of it. Pretty much all of it, the, mainly though, when he starts talking with Hanakawa. That's, I kind of feel like I need to just watch it all again. Yeah. Am I just gonna watch it all again? Let me just watch parts of it and see what's going on. So she shows up, she's fully Hanakawa. She became conscious Hanakawa after she drained the parents, it seems. And that's when she went from being a metal cat to being a black Hanakawa. Cause she, re she was like, hey cat, like let's keep, let's keep, this, let's keep this transaction going. And the cat was like, oh, this is interesting. This doesn't really happen. I'm down, let's see what happens. Okay, he, yeah. And so he manipulates Hanakawa to showing up Let's see some of the stuff he says. Whether you're possessed by an oddity or are possessing an oddity, you're still you. True, her character. It's just like, oh yeah, and the Ashino stuff. Let me give her the Ashino stuff, actually. Screw whatever I'm talking about. Where, like, she's so righteous that it's, like, no wonder that she hadn't already gotten hit. Yeah. Let me, let me hear your words, my boy. My boy. 
Come on, Oshino, are you on their side? They're being oddities. Or no, 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 no. They're being the parents, right? Yeah. I think parents. I think parents, not oddity. Class rep has their own point of view. The parents have their own point of view. So he's trying to look, he's trying to get both. He's trying to get both. He's not trying to say one's right or the other's right. He's just trying to get a full picture. They're only the circumstances. Yeah. But Araragi just wants to be on Hanakawa's side. So right that it's scary and makes you cringe? Ooh. Yeah, like why, if she's right, then why is it scary and why does it make you cringe? He's just trying to be unbiased. Or less biased. Hmm. So it's like, I mean, I relate to this feeling. I mean, this is a very specific feeling of like, I guess it's like an envy kind of thing. Or it's, you know, like there's somebody that's like an absolute golden child and you just, if you're even by them and come and remotely compare yourself to them, then you feel like garbage and you don't like feeling like garbage. So that you project that hatred onto them. And then it's like, oh, they're so perfect. They don't deserve that my hatred. And so I get even more upset that I'm even mad at them in the first place, which then it redoubles it, you know, that entire like cycle. That I feel like is what's going on with Hanakawa as the golden child. But she became this way because she was neglected so much and because she had such an awful like upbringing. So I guess that was kind of a doom spiral where like in the beginning, her blood parents, like, you know, everything went wrong there, right? With like the, I think the mother suicide and the father was just like, was gone. Um, and then she got bounced between homes. And so without that actual grounding, she like became latched onto this normal girl thing, which then turned her into an automatically righteous being. Not that she's actually like righteous, but that that's what she has like molded her, like, Obs like somehow molded herself into like an outer layer of, of ultra righteousness of like a normal girl or whatever um, as a way to deal with that, like the bouncing homes thing. And so when she finally landed in a home that she stuck with, the parents neglected her be largely because of the already, like the growing seedling of that ultra righteousness outside the veneer, freaking facade, whatever, right? But it's still like the parents, like the parent, like that, I feel like the parents could have course corrected that. Like if that was actually a problem, like if that was a problem, instead of neglecting the child, how about you actually deal with the child? Like it's not, like they're not pure spirits and that's what Oshino's saying. But he's also trying to be like, okay, let's get into their headspace. If he, you lived for Hana, with this, this ultra righteous Hanakawa thing that Hanakawa was constructed for so long, then you would get upset too. They're living in a hell where their flaws and immaturity are constantly being exposed. Mm, I almost want to commend them. I mean, yikes. Let's just say yikes. But see, like, yeah, I mean, what? You're, it's the golden child's fault for being golden and for shining so bright that people get mad? Like, and Oshino says, like, yeah, if you're special, then you have to be aware of what being special will do to the people around you. And I mean, like, sure. You know, but fault is like a word that is like, it makes it their responsibility, right? So it's like, are you, are you responsible for the impact of your brilliance on the people around you, right? Like if you are so pog that people around you hate you for it because they're like, wow, you're so pog that I, I hate you because I wish I was that pog and I'm not. And then they like, are become worse off for because of that. That's your fault because you're you're so pog that they that this has happened. I mean, I wouldn't say that. I would say it's their fault for letting their envy take them over and disrupt them this much. You know, I just I don't like the word fault. I don't like the word fault. Like I can understand like how it happened, but saying fault like assigns like a responsibility that I don't agree with. But I do see what Oshino's saying, and it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, this line here. Gifted humans must be aware of the effect that gift has on the humans around them. I mean, that's true that they should be aware because that w there will be an effect. Yeah, like, look at these lines. What is going on? Okay, these, like, flashing a bit. 
I feel like I'm about to sneeze. I meddle, I meddle with everything I touch. I'm, I'm gonna sneeze. I meddle with everyone I touch. As though blossoming with pride, I meddle. Blossoming with pride, okay. And shadow grows. Shadow grows, oddities, stuff. Cave, this is hell, right? Because he was talking about hell and we're going down. I mean, what are these fallen angels and now we're on, or not fallen angels, but like now we're on earth and then we're going into the underworld. Everything's irregular. Everything's irregular. Hmm. Yeah, because if she knows saying that she's the cog in the machine that's broken, that she's the cog that's like screwing everything up, and so she, her getting hit is because she's so, so specifically weird in the first place. I guess you could say fault like chain of events. Like she's the inciting chain of events that's caused her to even get hit and to be neglected as much in the first place. But I'm still gonna, I'm not gonna blame the first chain for every event that follows. Like I'm gonna blame them sequentially, but I, I get the point, it's interesting. And he says like, okay, I'm not gonna stand for this or I'm going to kill you. Respect that, I respect that Araragi. Araragi looks great by the way. This is a great shot of Araragi. Hmm, okay, and then this kind of stuff. No matter the circumstances, she's going to help a friend that's asking for help. Uh, I just like, mm, it's an instinct. It's a reflex, but like the, we're using words like instinctively in last episode, we were talking about how she instinctively helped the cat without actually being like genuinely caring. So, but like when she busts in this door, I mean, it sounds like she was like actually scared and worried like genuinely, you know? Not right here, right here. Not just doing it as an automatic reflex to like, oh, this is what a normal girl would do it. I mean, this felt genuine to me, but maybe she's just a good actor. I mean, I don't know, man. I have a bad, my, my, my read on Hanukkah was not very great, I'll be honest. I'll be the first to say it. Because, like, yeah, how deep does it go? How deep does her fake self, her, her normal girl act go? Does it go to the point that she'll literally, like act out as if she's genuinely concerned because a normal girl would be genuinely concerned. And then there comes a point that's like, if she really like in her, like an intense moment like this, where she thinks a friend's injured and she rushes there, if she still is acting as her fake self, as her, the one that she's put up her normal girl act, then I mean, what's the difference between her normal girl act and her true, true self act, right? Like she's in black Han Hanukkah form. She's almost completely nude, right? And she's in a high pressure situation. So I feel like those are all like things that would make you act more genuine. Oh man. And then some of these lines, you're so strong that you sold your soul to an oddity. I mean, she sold her body to the oddity, right? Uh, but yeah, like, yeah, she sold something to the oddity. You're so strong that you did that. I mean, these lines are just crazy, man. And they flat, that's a crazy thing. When it's like not a book and it's like an anime, right? You'll get hit with a crazy line like that and then it's just on to the next line. Like, oh my goodness. Okay. Too kind, you're too kind and you're too strong. You're so kind that you're tired of life. Like I gotta take that line out to dinner and ask it about some things, you know? Like I gotta give that line a nice glass of wine. Or apple juice, speaking of. So kind that you're tired of life. Hmm. Because, yeah, I mean, he later talks about the, uh... I'll, I mean, I'm just gonna have to scroll to it. The whole, like, you don't get rewarded, life sucks kind of stuff, and you just have to deal with it. Which, I mean, was super relatable. I'll get to that in a second, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, no matter what you are, what you are. Uh, or is he just trying to get her to attack him because he has the sword in him? Also, that's probably why he's standing up so straight, you know, and not moving the entire time. Because he got an entire sword in him. 
You were born as that person, you grew up into that person. Uh, Hanakawa, what even are you? I know you say you're a human being, but then he says you're not a human being because you're like half oddity in this moment. But like, you've no right to call yourself human. What does Aragi think a human is? I feel like I gotta rewatch Kizu to answer that. Gosh dang it, man. Cause like, he has such a thing for humanity, right? He didn't want to be a vampire. He wanted to go back to being human. I guess maybe it's like, well, okay. He lost his humanity when he self-sacrificed. So humanity is something that you can sacrifice, right? Um, I would say. What is humanity? I don't freaking know. Right, let's just keep going. <laughs> this show, the questions this show poses are just so high, high, high level think. You don't know who your father is and your mother's committed suicide. That's right. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. You didn't know how to bond. He didn't know how to bond with people either. There's a connection there, right? That they both lacked bonding potentials. And then Aragi unlocked empathy when he started inter interacting with Hanakawa, right? The whole, like, that whole thing, like, split open. Um, did Hanakawa also do that to him? And that's why their relationship is so screwed. Because he latched onto her as the first person that he like truly started to empathize with. And then like that caused him to be like, I'm going I'm willing to die for this girl. Like that's where the obsessiveness came in that was unhealthy because it was like a gut reaction insta boom bang bop. And then her, she also wasn't able to bond with people. Cause she was neglected. And what's more, you actually succeeded. Yeah, so I feel like he's trying to be like, we're kind of the same, right? We both have these, we're both mis, who cares if you're misfortunate? Like everything sucks. Well, what's your wording, my dog? Even if bad things happen, just be happy. And cut, that cut to Shinobu is crazy to me. I mean, is that what he, like, uh, even if bad things happen, just be happy. I mean, that's kind of a, uh, man, because that's kind of true, but it's also kind of not true. It's like half of that is so true that it hurts, and the other half of that is, like, feels like it's uh, kind of like a forehead thing, right? Like, oh, you're homeless? Just buy a house. Oh, bad things happen? Just be happy, you know? But at the same time, you do, like, people do have the... Like, your situation can't completely control your mental. You always got at least a part of your mental that you got control over. So even if everything's going to chaos, like, use the part of your mental you way want to use it, I guess, is kind of the idea here. That's just crazy. And that cut to Shinobu, like, elicits a response in me that I cannot verbalize. Ugh, I can feel it. I can feel it in my in my chest. It's like a freaking uh, alien from Alien, you know? A, a chest burster, a xenomorph. It's like trying to bur burrow out of me. But if it burrows out of my chest, like, it's not going to be in an intelligible form. It's just going to be screeching. So I need to, like, reach into my throat and pull it out the right way into, like, in, like into words through language. But I'm having trouble doing that because it's so crazy. Because it's a chest burster. Yeah, and he's saying, like, and go back to the life you had. Like, that sucks. So what, you're supposed to just be happy with that? What do you mean? Like, it's like this weird acceptance of circumstances. You'll never reach an understanding. Even if in the slim chance you end up happy, it's no use. No matter how happy you become, the fact that you were once happy won't disappear. I mean, yeah, that's true. All the pain you've had did happen. But, is there a butt coming up? Why are we in hell? Like in the, in the screen, what? Okay, what'd you just say, my guy? 
You'll remember it the moment you forget. You'll never forget that you were unhappy. That's what he's saying. You'll always dream about it. You'll all everyone's always get, or not even everyone, just the two of them, right? We'll have nightmares all our lives about the times we were unhappy. Even if we become happy, reality will never change. Suffering. This is crazy, by the way, when she turns into her clothes again. Don't use the oddity as a pretext. Don't use misfortune as a platform for growth. If you do, you'll end up hurting yourself again. And then he hits you with the oddities don't actually exist. Weren't you going to give me a whole new life? Is this Hanakawa's brain? They're complete lies because she wanted the vampire. So he's saying, it's a lie. That's not going to get you out of your thing. Oh, yeah. Because was her daydreaming of a vampire, like, her longing for, like, an escape? Like, an escapism fantasy? Plus, L plus ratio plus, um, like, that empathetic bridge that she was, that maybe desired, which she and Adaragi share? Maybe that's, like, a big connection between the two of them. Like... Yeah, like the break from individuality into empathy and like the struggle that comes with it. That's like what Araragi is singing in Hanakawa. And so she feels betrayed here when she he says that oddities are lies because that's what she originally was doing with the whole vampire thing. Okay, so oddities are lies. If you still want to relieve your stress, I'll take it. I'll touch your boobs all you want. I'll stare at your underwear all the time. Yeah? And then fireflies from his hand. Because we're friends. Friend zoned again. Beautiful, though. And then they talk about hating each other. Okay, yeah. So he'll become somebody that's willing to take in all the stuff. A star. But he won't become a hero who's willing to like lead her away from her problems. So what he's saying is, I'll be a, I'll be a stress ball for you, but I'm like I'm not going to be someone to solve your issues because what she wants is for a vampire to come in and solve her issues, right? Like, and that's what like a vampire hero. He's the he's supposed to be the hero. He's the vampire. Blah blah blah. So for him to decline that and say, oh, I'll just be a stress relief for her. I mean, like, yeah, that's kind of annoying. But then he says no, right? Yeah, I'm not even going to be a star. All I can become is a vampire, the person to take the stress in. So what is, I don't know what star, is, she means exactly by star, but yeah, somebody that, he says, I'll just be someone that I'll take the, take the stress. I'll be a vampire, I'll be a leech. I'll fix your problem so I don't gotta deal with mine. And I couldn't even become that, he thinks to himself. And then they say that they hate each other. I mean, this is like the, Hedgehog Dilemma, right? 101. I don't know. Freak meat, man. And they say they hate each other. I mean, love and hate, two sides of the same coin kind of thing. And then this is the die rant, right? This is crazy. She says, fine, you want my stress, I'll give it to you. No, that's what he wants. He wants to be killed. Yeah. What is this guy? He gets cut in half. Yeah, unlucky. Hmm. But then she got hurt as well. Hit by the oddity killer. Hmm. Hmm. It's crazy because like Oshino's accepting that this isn't even the right thing to do, right? That he's just self-satisfying. Self-satisfaction. Wait, there was a comment about that. About the, that's like, oh, wait, oh, wait. No, that's what justice, that was a whole justice thing. Oh, frick me. He's just satisfying himself. Oh my gosh. I can't do this. I can't do it. My brain's not big enough. I'm looking at the comments. I need it. Okay. Pink cubed. Videos. Ah, uh, ah, uh, 
What episode was that? That was a Nisei. I'm just gonna look at Nisei episodes really quick. Okay, this is important. Um, self-satisfaction. I want, I just want somebody's like banger lines on it because, okay. Cause it's like, okay, 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 okay. It's like, I just clicked a thing that said light and an important spoiler. I just clicked it. Why did I click that? Okay, let's calm down. The, the thing here that's crazy to me is that this is going back to justice, right? Because justice is, what is justice? I'm just looking for this freaking self-satisfy line. Cause somebody, I remember the thing is somebody worded it really well. I might just cut, I might just cut here. I found it, I think I found it. Okay, bet. Okay, right here. First, look, my first comment here, hey, full circle, we're back. Okay, real justice does not self-sacrifice, but self-satisfy. Self-sacrifice refers to the inconsistency between one's conviction and one's actions, while self-satisfaction means that one's conviction and actions are consistent. Okay. Um, there's a difference between our convictions and actions, hence there's no self-satisfaction, only self-sacrifice. Wait, okay, so real justice does not self-sacrifice, but self-satisfy. Sacrifice refers to inconsistency between one's actions, convictions, and actions. Conviction. Conviction is such a crazy word to be using. Oh my goodness. Uh, she was a fake. He's a fake. Everyone's fake. When he's sacrificing himself, he, what is he doing? Is he doing an act of justice? Um, I just do... It's not self-sacrifice. It's self-satisfaction. I just do whatever pleases me. So... I mean, am I meaning to say that, like... If his conviction is to die for someone else, right, with 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 Kishot and with Hanakawa, then would his form of real justice be dying for someone else? Like, is what we just watched an act of real justice by Araragi or an attempted act of real justice by Araragi, but that real justice is, like... Well, then why does it, then he was, he stopped doing it. He's not, he doesn't do this anymore, right? No, I mean, he's, he's super self-sacrificial, but he's kind of, I feel like growing away from that with, with, um, I don't know, like his relationship with Sanjagahara. And I mean, he's, how many times did he sacrifice himself in Bake or Nisei? Mm, I don't know. I mean, he, I feel like he's going back and dealing with these things of self, self-sacrifice, but Man, it's like it's weird because I feel like his act of self-sacrifice is an act of self-satisfaction, which is real justice, right? Because his conviction is to be sacrificed because that's what he wants to do. Um, so it's the realest thing for him. It's not fake. And then his action is sacrificing himself to save Hanakawa. But he also accepts that he's not even saving Hanakawa and that he's only really just doing what he wants, Right? As he's like slumping here. It's not like I wanted to save you. Even if it's pointless and worthless, I just want to die for your sake. So his actions have lined up with his conviction, which is wanting to die for her sake. So that's real justice, right? That's self that's self satisfaction. Because he satisfied his his thing. But it was done in an act of self sacrifice. But the term self sacrifice in context of the justice conversation is used for like when you sacrifice your convictions when, by not lining them up with your actions or whatever, right? But then... The sword is causing damage to her. And then he gets like riled up again. Right? Like... His act of sac of sacrificing himself become didn't like didn't just one shot the situation right. It there's like that that plug out of the socket thing like damage is being done, which bothers him. So, if he truly only cared about dying for her, well then I guess he didn't successfully die for her because she's freaking out right now. So yeah, I guess it, it would make sense that he would be worried about this. Okay. And then Shinobu says, oh yeah, of course this would happen, dummy. 
Get your legs back. I'm going to go take a munch real quick. Let me eat my sword first. Munch. This show is so weird. Okay. And then this, 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 this. Is this okay, Hanakawa? We're all worthless and misfortunate. Because, yeah, even his act of self... Of sacrificing himself for Hanakawa, he didn't even get to feel rewarded by because the, the you know, crazy sword you know, the issue there where it was like an, it was a, it wasn't a clean cut to put it that way. So he wasn't even able to like feel good off that, which I think is why he's saying that everything sucks and we're all misfortunate. We'll never be rewarded. Just like he wasn't rewarded just now. I like how his, uh, the imprint in the concrete on the wall is literally his top half, you know, we'll never be able to make it right. Because, yeah, okay, maybe make it right is referring to that justice thing again, right? Because he'll never be able to do an act of true justice, which is, you know, because even when he sacrificed himself for, wow, this is crazy. I think that is what's going on. Because when he sacrificed himself for Kiss Shot, he wasn't able to do the justice there either. His real justice, make it right, because he didn't die. He was just turned into a vampire thrall. And then now he tries to do it. And then it's not that he's not dying. Well, I don't even... He's not really... Well, no, Shinobu saved him. He might have been dying there because he had taken so much damage. But even if he's dying, his dying didn't help her in the way that he wanted it to. So even that wasn't succeeding in his... He, he wasn't self... He wasn't doing a real act of justice, which was which is self-satisfaction. He wasn't able to satisfy that through his actions, you know, and how it relates to his um, convictions. And so this is him like reconciling with Hanakawa that his his attempted acts of real justice have failed. His attempted acts of self-sacrifice have failed. And so what are we supposed to do about that? Right? And we'll build... And, and he's in, he kind of has a doomer mentality of... And it's always going to be that way. Is that okay? Of course not. Hmm. And then she lost her memories again. Did she really lose her memories? I don't know if I believe that. Like, why would she lose her memories, right? If she was cognitive, if she was there while she was the cat, why would she lose her memories coming out of the cat? Plus, um, she's really good at lying and pretending, you know? So maybe she didn't lose her memories. It's just like, oh, I'll go back to being a normal girl and I'll just repress all this weird stuff that happened. I could see that being the case. I don't trust you, Oshino. I'm sorry. <sighs> This show, this show is just crazy, man. It's just like, it's, I don't even have words, you know? I get stunlocked. I think, I think this show has stunlocked me more than any other show by like multitudes, by multitudes over. Um, for, for many different reasons, for dozens of reasons. And it's like, it's crazy too. Like, you know, she's, there's all these like booty shots of her, right? And I just, I don't even like bat my eyes anymore. That's just crazy to me. And what does the sword represent? Let me just check what the sword represents, and then I'm gonna, then I'm gonna, we're gonna be done because your boy's mental. I'm not gonna lie, the mental is cracked. Okay, my, it's gone, it's gone. This sh this show takes a lot out of my, my thinking ability. Uh, come on, where's the sword information, please? Don't you talk about the sword? Where do you talk about the sword, man? Okay, so Shinobu unsword swallows the sword. Just barfs it up. Golden light. No handle, no nothing. Let's go. Heart span. The oddity killer. What does heart span represent? It's beautiful. It is a beautiful sword. Shinobu sits back down. So you got the demon sword heart span. It's like right at the end of this, right? It just randomly cuts to heart span. And he says all he feels is lust. And then it cuts to the sword. Okay, bet. Yeah, what do you say? A weapon that kills only oddities. 
Mm. This is also an example. Um, I was other, I, the other day I was talking about um, we don't have any example. What I was saying, this is my quote, that I don't have any examples for the extermination of an oddity. So I don't know how to judge people like Kage Nui or, or Kage Nui, right? Because Kage Nui wanted to exterminate oddities. And since we didn't really get to see that play out, it's like, we don't know how healthy it is. In this example, trying to exterminate the metal cat with a weapon that can only hurt oddities ended up damaging Hanakawa. So doing it forcefully and doing an extermination causes damage That's, that was bad, that, that was to the point that Araragi wasn't satisfied. So that's kind of an answer to that question, that I'm still liking the Oshino, as, the Shino, Oshino angle the most because it seems to do it a more of an incorporation than an extermination. And this, yeah, with this as an example of exterminating going wrong, question mark. Or just not perfectly right, rather. Wait, so you don't even talk about the sword, like, at all? Hmm. If I had Kizu downloaded, I'd probably pull it up right now. But you know what? I don't. I may... Because I don't remember how much they talked about the sword in Kizu. I mean, they talked about the sword. But, like, in terms of, like, what it represents, right? <sighs> Crazy. Honestly, this episode of the arc really kind of did it for me. I, the first three episodes were kind of slogging for me. Um, I'm afraid of cats. I'd like to hear about the dream I had last night. Oh, that's crazy. This is the flashing bit for episode one of the arc. Um, he talks about how he's... he. It was a dream, right? This arc is a dream that now he's talking about. And in episode four, he was talking about how he was always... You're always going to have nightmares over those misfortunes and like the things that went wrong. So the entire arc was an example of that thing he talked about in episode four just now about having dreams about things going wrong. That's crazy. Um, yeah, no, but yeah, the, yeah, the, um, he do be stuttering though, not gonna lie. The first three episodes were slogging a bit for me. Episode four really kind of tied it together. Feral Shinobu. Uh, this, this little animation of her like clawing is funny. Um, but yeah, because it was a lot of repeat of information with sprinkled like important things like here and there. Um, but yeah, no, episode four, I really liked. That was definitely a, a good episode, like a really, like a really solid episode because I feel like it really gave example to a lot of really interesting justice things. Like, I feel like I'm, the, hopefully, hopefully I'm, I'm not like losing my mind with what I'm talking about, but if I am, then I guess... It's fun to lose your mind, right? Because I'm having a good time. But yeah, that's all I really got for this episode, I think, of Nico Monogatari Kuro. On to the next. I forget what's next. I'm going to ask people in the Discord because that's just how it is. But yeah, made it to the end of this arc. Um, of course, you made it here too. So I appreciate you for that. I appreciate you making this far into episode. Not that many people do. 7%, whatever it is. You're here. That's my matters. I appreciate you for that. Of course, if you like the video, like the video, subscribe. If you're new, blah, blah, blah. Comment below if you have anything to say. Or join the Discord and talk to me or other people there. And yeah, that's all I really got for this episode. Looking forward to the next season, whatever it is. Um, especially, like, wait, it's called Subasa Tiger? Yeah, can we, like, figure out Araragi and Hanakawa's relationship instead of just curing the symptom over and over and then having her have amnesia? Like, let's, let's crank it out. But yeah, that's all I really got for this episode. I'll be seeing you then. Peace.